Jocelyn Briggs here with Boundless Pursuits Coaching and Training. I just scared my daughter. <laughs> she didn't know I was about to go live. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot to grab a bowl. So I want to share with you a recipe today. I've been talking about this all week. Those of you who've been, you know, showing up to my workouts, and if you're not, why not? Why aren't you? Because um, they're fun, and they're not even, like, that excruciating. <laughs> so you should be joining us, because we have fun. Um, but I've been talking about my anchovy recipe. And I know you're probably, like, my daughter's totally making the funniest face right now. I know, I felt that way too. I don't really like fish. I'm not a fish eater. A lot of you are, which is fantastic. Oh, I was gonna share this, sorry. Hey, Linda. I know like a lot of you, oh, I, crap. Oh, all right, well, I'll do that after. I know a lot of you love fish. That's fantastic for you. I don't like it. I used to like fish and chips, that's about it. But. Here's the thing, sometimes we have to adult. <laughs> sometimes we have to eat things or we have to trick ourselves into, I'm trying to teach my kids, I'm still trying to teach my husband this. I'm trying to teach my kids this right, right now. Like we need to trick ourselves into liking things because they're good for us, because of the better good. And fish is one of those things that I'm working on. So I can tolerate it now, like I don't get excited. I'm having my salmon. I'm still eating my salmon from Monday night. I'm having that tonight. Um, but, you know, like it's, it's worth it because I kind of care about my future and I kind of care about my now, I, I care about my health. And so I, I figured out, I, sardines, sardines was like, it was, an, it was off the table, like with liver. Liver is still off the table. I can't, somebody told me today that they like liver. I'm like, how, how, how do you like liver? Like I have vivid, awful memories of being a kid and like literally dousing my liver with ketchup <laughs> trying and then having to like try to sneak it into the garbage when my mom wasn't looking because it's so disgusting i hate it i can't i'm traumatized um sardines was on that list but i got this book my daughter i think my daughter bought this for me a couple of years ago and there's a recipe in here that made me accept sardines and i'm going to share it with you today so i'm going to grab a bowl because I forgot to do that. And I'm gonna show you how you can maybe, if, you're, if you have a somewhat open mind, that you could maybe accept sardines too. And there, you can Google the health benefits, but especially if you're female, like there's a million health benefits. In fact, Shalene Flanagan talks about it in this book, how good they are for you. I don't know if she talks about liver. I'll have to check. <laughs> I, I don't care. I can't do liver. I'll, I'll do the sardines. So anyways, I just, one of the things is I have a fear of fish. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid of fish. And so I don't like looking at them. I have a fear of frogs and I have a fear of fish. I don't eat frogs. I, I don't like frogs, period. But so fish, I don't want to see the, the fish part of the fish. <laughs> so sardines often have eyeballs and bones and all the all the stuff that I don't really care to see. And so I discovered these ones that come in like a little can or a little like box that have no bones. They have no eyeballs. Like they're like de de skinned, deboned, whatever. D de, and it's just like opening up a can of tuna. And I would say that if you that's another thing that I have accepted in my adult years, tuna. Um, so if you like tuna, then you will like this recipe. If you don't like tuna, like tuna salad, um, maybe you need to start with tuna. But if you're good with tuna salad, if you like tuna salad, I would bet you that you would be able to do this, like even if it grosses you out. So I'm putting in two eggs. I already boiled and cooked these eggs because I was organized this time. Um, and side note, I kind of like having boiled eggs ready in my fridge because Again, one of the things that I'm trying to do right now is cut back a little bit on meat. And eggs is a great way to have a protein, to something, a good protein to add to a salad. Or even like if you have like a veggie tray, you know, like a like for lunch. Like one of my clients does these little cute veggie charcuterie type things. I mean, <laughs> when I grew up, my mom called them cold plates. I think it was a British thing. I think it came from my grandmother. They were called cold plates and it was just basically... <laughs> a form of a British poor man's charcuterie. And it was just, um, 
like sliced up veggies, sliced up cold meats, sliced up, you know, maybe an egg, pickles, pickled onions. My dad would always put pickled onions on his. <laughs> my daughter's grossed out again. All right, so I've got two eggs in here. Um, they're gonna get diced up in a second. I'm gonna throw in a couple of celery stalks, um, diced up, and I like to dice them really fine. Um, notice, I don't know if you can see my pretty decent knife skills going on here. Um, I never worked in a kitchen, but many of you think I can't cook, but I can, and I have, you know, I learned this from, I'm pretty sure the Food Network when I was home with my kids. And so I have, I would say, I mean, I could do it faster, but I'm talking and thinking at the same time. So, <laughs> but I didn't chop off my fingers and it drives me crazy when I see people slice like this, right? Because you want to slice with your knuckles. I learned that from the Food Network. Also, I worked at the Olive Garden for years and we used to have to wear um, these like chained, I don't know if Bonnie's gonna watch this at some point, these chained gloves when we when we sliced um, lemons. Cause you know, Olive Garden was all about legal. So then now, now I'm doing olives. So again, if you don't like olives, um, I think the olives give, you know, a ton of flavor to this. You could skip these, I suppose. You could try avocado instead of olives. Obviously it's gonna give a, an entirely different taste, but you want about a quarter, everything's about a quarter of a cup. So two eggs, quarter cup of olives, quarter cup of some other stuff that I'm gonna show you. Um, but seriously, if, if you can, this is not dinner tonight, by the way, this is just a snack that I like to have meat up, but it could be a meal because you could serve this. You, you're gonna see when it's done, it's gonna look like tuna salad essentially so you could serve it on you know a, a nice healthy bread at like a tuna salad you could serve it on a bed of lettuce I tend to try to avoid breads um how's everybody doing tonight by the way talk to me talk to me tell me who's with me who's watching tell me I'm watching. <laughs> show me a, a, a face emoji your reaction emoji to what you think of sardines and if you think I if you think I'm full of crap, yes. Okay, so what you could do is after you've made this salad, maybe you have this book, Linda, and if you don't have this book, you should get it. I really should have been hired as a salesperson. Who just put the angry face? Was that you? No, oh. probably the face that they made. They the angry face? You can't be angry at sardines. I you can you be burfy, <laughs> be angry at the sardines. Oh, <laughs> Um, I should have been Shalene's sales department. I sold so many of these books when it came out, like not on purpose because I love this book. It is one of, it is probably my most favorite cookbook ever. It's the run fast, eat slow. She has another one, run fast, cook fast, eat slow. Um, so many good recipes, so much good information. She co-wrote it with her friend, I believe who also was a competitive runner, but just you know, even if you're not a runner, it's such an amazing book for women's health. Um, but so the other thing you could do with it is serve it as a snack or you can make it part of a charcuterie board. That's, you know, the fancy way of saying what my mom used to call a cold plate. <laughs> I remember asking my dad, who is very sarcastic, obviously British sarcastic for a cold plate for lunch once. And he gave me a plate with some ice cubes on it. And it's funny how we remember, my daughter's laughing because she's like, yep, that's, yeah, that, that is granddad. Um, but it was literally just like, you know, a poor person's version of the charcuterie, like whatever you happen to have on hand, you, put, like, you know, diced whatever veg cold cuts. And then maybe like we would have like some crackers and um, pickled beets because <laughs> my mom always made pickled beets. <laughs> Okay, so here we go so far. Now I'm going to add walnuts. So again, walnuts are so, so good. All of this stuff is um, really kind of prominent on the Mediterranean diet because they're all foods that have like really high nutrient value, nutrient. Linda, if you like tuna salad, I challenge you to try this. So I'm putting a quarter cup, you're supposed to roast them. I'm too lazy, I can't be bothered. 
Do you really taste it? I'm sure if you have a really trained palate, you could probably taste the difference. I, I, I don't think I will notice the difference. Okay, so here's, I'm gonna show you canned sardines, skinless and boneless in olive oil. Okay, they're not gonna have these little eyeballs on them that are gonna just totally gross me out. Um, and then I have a quarter cup of plain yogurt. Okay, so I went through this the other day. You can buy higher fat yogurt. I would probably recommend a higher fat yogurt. What you wanna look at is the ingredients and make sure that the ingredients are minimal, right? Like it should be literally like, uh, why, why do I always look at the French side? Skim milk, milk protein, bacterial cultures. That's it. Like, so yours might not be skim milk. It'll be whole milk. That's totally okay. Um, so I'm adding a quarter cup of yogurt. Um, I'm adding Dijon mustard. I'm pretty sure this is Dijon mustard. This came from our, it came from my charcuterie board. So it, it looks like it. So a couple tablespoons of that. And, and I, oh, I gotta add the sardines. So, you know, really it's not, there's not a lot of sardine. I'm just kind of chopping up the eggs a little bit with the spoon. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. And she says, sardines drain. So I'm gonna drain the olive oil out. I wasn't sure, I haven't made this in a long time. I every week say I'm going to make it because it's one of my favorite things to have on hand. Um, okay, good, I'm gonna show you. See, they're just these little like, and it's kind of, kind of smell like tuna. Can you see that? So there's nothing, it's just the meat. So it's not as scary. So I'm gonna actually drain them. I don't remember why I was brave enough to try this, other than I feel like it might have been my boss at the running store that I used to work at. Some of you guys know him, Steve. I feel like he used to bring these to work and I, I, and I kind of opened my mind because they sort of smell like tuna. And I think that's when I tried it and I was like, okay, I can do this. So I'm going to just throw these in and they're just going to be crumbled up and I'm just going to stir it all up. But women over 40, I, I challenge you to, to try this. If you like tuna, again, if you don't like tuna, like you're going to make a big liar out of me, but okay. This is my master cutting skills here because <laughs> I missed an egg. Okay. One sec. Who's gonna try this? Linda, are you gonna try this? I feel like you should. And that's it. And so, okay, here's what you could do with this. You could do, I'm gonna be sharing life-changing bread. Literally, that is what it's called, life-changing bread. Um, I'm gonna be sharing that next week. And this is a great thing to serve on life-changing bread. Um, it's not going to be, for those of you who love a French baguette, it's not that kind of bread. It's healthy. Well, Paul ate it. Linda, I'm surprised because if you like tuna and you like salmon, I, I can't imagine you. Rennell's leaving the room. I think she's like totally grossed out. Oh, I think I have a message. Oh, she said no. So this is what it looks like. So here's... You could serve it on life-changing bread, which I'm gonna show you next week. You could serve it on, you know, if you have like a bread that you eat, you can make it. Let's just call it tuna salad so that we can wrap our mindset around it. You have a tuna salad with your red onions and pickles, I think you said. And I, I'm gonna show you the crackers I like. For those of you who like crackers, I, you may or may not have heard of these. I can guarantee some of you have not. But I want to show you. And the best place to get these is Costco, and they are on sale quite often. Is Mary's Crackers? They're super expensive. Um, best place to get them is Costco. I get the big box. We need to open our minds to a new type of cracker. These are not <laughs> cheese nips. They're not Ritz crackers. They're and and this is going to be kind of like the the life changing bread I share with you is going to be like the Mary's Cracker of bread. Oh, hell no, Linda. Like, Rennell won't even touch it. Um, I might, no. I got to start her slow. I got, I don't even think she would eat fish and chips. 
So you could have these, this could be, you know, a snack with, Trish is here, Trish makes these cute little, I was calling your lunch boxes charcuteries, but that's not, that's just the new, what we call them now. But you could take some of this with some diced up veggies, some Mary's crackers, you could use Breton's, Breton's aren't terribly bad, or wheat thins. Um, I like these, I believe these are gluten-free. Yes, they are gluten-free. They're basically like seeds. So these to me are actually have nutrition. And one of the things when I'm being good is I'm always trying to find things that have nutrition, not just food that I'm just putting down the hatch, things that actually put into my body. Mary's crackers, bento boxes, sure. Bento boxes, they are, they're like cute little bento boxes. Um, you know, Bretons and, and Triscuits aren't like terrible, um, but they're still full of like vegetable oil and stuff that we don't necessarily want to elevate our health, but they're not like the worst, right? They're obviously better than like Ritz crackers or um, what are those other ones, the veggie thins or whatever they're called, right? So that's what I'm gonna recommend. So that's what I got for you guys today. If you wanted to make a meal out of it, you could throw it onto some greens, like a, a lettuce, plate of greens, throw on some grape tomatoes, um, you know, maybe even add in, if you wanted to make it into like more Francais, you could add some like green beans, like a niçoise salad, because I think tuna goes on niçoise salads. Am I saying that right? <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you try it. I challenge you, don't, don't knock it till you've tried it. Uh, if you like tuna, if you eat salmon, if you eat fish in general, um, remember you just, you wanna get, I get, I think we usually find these at Farm Boy. Um, I'm sure that you can find them at other grocery stores too, but they're, you know, they're a little bit less daunting if you don't like fish. Um, so you wanna, you wanna use those. You could swap out the olives for avocado. Avocado would be a great addition to this too. You're gonna be increasing the fat, but it's good fat. So just kind of watch that depending what your goal is with, regards to weight management. Um, you wanna drain them. So, oh, I forgot the parsley, one sec. It's sitting right here, parsley. Okay, see, I always forget something because I can't talk and cook at the same time. So you want a quarter cup of parsley. And parsley, I think somebody was kind enough. Yvonne, was it you? Somebody sent me the health benefits of parsley the other day because they are numerous. Um, see, watch my knife skills, pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I used to when I was a stay-at-home mom I'm still a stay-at-home mom but <laughs> when I was a stay-at-home mom I used to like try to cut like the people on TV <laughs> I used to practice because I mean I always work so I shouldn't I shouldn't make myself sound I was I, I needed some skill building in my life <laughs> So cooking was the thing I used to do. I used to try to be like the, look at and see here I am year, years later with my own cooking show on Facebook. <laughs> oh my God, I'm such a loser. Okay, so it's supposed to be about quarter a cup. I think I might have a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. If you don't like parsley, that's, it is a strong, it is a strong one. I'm supposed to add some salt and pepper. You don't, I don't actually find you need a lot of salt and pepper with this because of all the, the olives, but I'll add a little bit. So the other thing I want to see is if you are trying to improve your diet, if you're trying to, you know, elevate your health, one of the, it, it can be really confusing. There's a lot of do this, don't do that. This is bad for you. This is good for you. Um, what I want to say is where you can kind of not go wrong is whole foods. So you notice everything that went in here, like nothing was processed. Even, even the Mary's crackers, like I almost don't even consider them processed because there's, there's really nothing terrible. Like there's nothing bad in them. They're all, it's all whole foods. So let's simplify the process. Don't worry about macros. Don't worry about necessarily calories even initially. Don't worry about um, fats and carbs. If you can start to gradually one by one um, 
get rid of processed foods, like foods that come in a box, foods that come in a can, foods that come ready-made and replace them with whole foods. Like this took me no time to make, right? I mean, yeah, I had the eggs boiled up ahead of time, um, but everything I'm showing you right now is just whole food based. If you can actually make those changes in your diet, um, you're gonna start to change your health from the inside out and the results are going to come and you're gonna love your life a lot more than trying to figure out, um, this is from the keg from the other night, I'm using up my salt and pepper blend. See, they even conclude salt and pepper. Um, that is how I would say to start your journey. Don't worry, don't worry about all the, you know, should I do keto, should I do this? No, you should eat whole foods and start there. And your body will, um, it will change from the inside out. Your, your microbiome, your, I just learned this recently, your, your microbiome, your digestive kind of system is right now currently operating for your diet, right? So if you eat a lot of processed foods, if you eat a lot of fast foods, your microbiome is, is actually set for that. Sometimes, I actually have heard this, sometimes, people will change their diet to a healthy diet and they won't feel good initially because your digestive system isn't actually operating for those foods. For me, I'm the opposite. Like when I eat bad, when I, unfortunately it sucks to be me sometimes because like when I do eat junk food, I don't feel good. So it does deter me because I feel awful because I don't necessarily have, not that I'm by any stretch perfect, um, but it's a really simple way to start. You, yes, you can have potatoes. You can have anything that's single ingredient and not worry too much about it. Yes, you can have fruit. Yes, you know, yes, you can have, um, you know, avocado. You can have all of the things if they're single ingredient foods, right? Start there, make your own dressings. Like dressings literally in our house are olive oil, um, some kind of vinegar and a little bit of Dijon mustard. Like that's the kind of dressing and maybe some lemon. Can get fancy, but that's super simple, right? If you look at the ingredient list on salad dressings and condiments, um, you might as well just like eat right, right out of your sugar jar. Like literally, literally, how British is this, hey? <laughs> literally, um, there's so much sugar. I have a client right now who's trying to go sugar free, which is crazy. I, I applaud her, I bow to her. Um, for the month and she's like I can't believe she looked at the ingredient list of everything to see so anyways I'll stop babbling because you know I'm locked in my house and lonely and we're locked in till June okay one last parting thought before I go it is like the most magically summer like I'm burnt right now because I've been outside on my deck working all day and I remembered last year uh, not so much I guess last year but in the past I was always I would always brag that I get to work from home and on a day like this, I can go out and work on my patio. Now like we're all doing it, but I thought to myself today, like weather like this is joy. Like joy is all wrapped up in days like this. And you know what, COVID can't take that away. Like lockdowns can't take that away. Like COVID cannot stop spring and cannot stop summer. So you guys focus on what brings you joy, those simple things that bring you joy um, I, as I was sitting outside getting burnt and loving the sun, uh, my text came through saying, locked down until June 2nd. And I thought, I don't even care. Like what, I'm locked in, like, I mean, I could care, but I'm just saying, COVID can't take away the weather. So focus on what you have control over, focus on what brings you joy, focus on the things that you have, not the things you don't have. And, uh, yeah, keep on, keep on being better, a little bit better every day. Bye. Thanks for joining me.